Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Down in the Nicaraguan jungle, there's a spot called Cantagallo that's got some pretty interesting ruins. According to the official story, they were built using Cyclopean masonry techniques, but not everyone is convinced. Telegram user named Adam Kasprak said, if you ask me, this looks more like a fossilized trunk of an ancient tree. And you know what? A lot of people agreed with him. Someone named S. Little chimed in, saying, we now see clearly the huge fossilized into stone ancient tree stumps. Maybe fossilized by the heat of the sun's plasma rays. What if, the huge megalithic sites were made of wood from the huge trees, and then fossilized in place in the same plasma event that fossilized the huge ancient tree stumps? Just a thought I had the other day. It's possible. Another person named Sylvia added, when they look at ancient sites associated with advanced technology from star beings and the gods, the stonework fits together very precisely with no gaps and larger massive blocks. These are different. We can only see a small section here, so can't see its overall shape or depth. But it does look like Barker plates. Some people even think it might be a fossilized turtle. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. There is a video circulating, the creator of which is unknown, that claims to have found the right footprints of a giant in the border village of Cameron. Prior to this discovery, the left foot of the giant was found in its native location, Nigeria. Located in a place called Cabri and Taraba State. As you can see, the left foot of the giant measures about 24 inches and has been imprinted into a stone. The imprint is so deep that one could drink water from the hole it created. Many have argued that giants are capable of creating such a hole in a stone, as if they have witnessed or measured the strength of a giant before. What intrigued him the most was, why the left footprints of the giant were found in Nigeria, while the right footprints were found in Cameron, in a border village called Cabri. The assumption is that the footprints belong to the same giant. The villagers have also reported finding other footprints, although the discoverer was unable to visit those locations at the time. Could these be the footprints of the same giant that was found in Nigeria? What do you think? When perusing the displays at the museum featuring the medical instruments discovered during excavations in Pompeii, one cannot help but be struck by their remarkable resemblance to modern-day tools. In fact, some of these instruments have carvings that are so modern in appearance that they could easily be mistaken for contemporary designs. It's truly astounding to think that these medical implements were created so long ago, yet their functionality and design were so advanced that they continue to impress us today. On the other hand, it's interesting to note that the first design for a machine capable of producing screws didn't emerge until 1569, but it wasn't until over a century later, in 1741, that this design was finally able to be put into practice. What do you think? Petra is a remarkable city that has been the subject of much discussion and debate in mainstream history. 
The narrative that is being pushed is that the city was carved entirely by hand, using nothing but hammers and chisels, which is an impressive feat to say the least. However, I have reason to believe that the truth about Petra's construction is much more complex and intriguing than we have been led to believe. While there is no definitive proof as to who or when Petra was built, I am convinced that it is much much older than we have been told. Recent history associates it with the Arabs, who are believed to have lived there before the city was annexed by the Roman Empire. But I have a feeling that there is much more to this story than meets the eye. One of the most remarkable features of Petra is the sophisticated water aqueducts that have been carved into the mountains themselves. These feats of engineering are truly astounding and speak to the incredible skill and ingenuity of the city's builders. Moreover, Petra is much larger than the photo suggest, it is estimated that as many as 20,000 people lived there at its peak. So, when was Petra actually carved? The truth is, we will probably never know for sure. But what we can say with certainty is that the city was built using techniques and tools that were far ahead of their time. Indeed, I can't help but wonder what kind of electric-powered tools the builders of Petra might have used if they had had access to such technology. What do you think? Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.